This just came in the mail, so let's unbox it and experiment to see if the Acorns debit card is as great as they claim it is. Here is the very green, heavy metal, laser engraved Visa debit card by Acorns. Acorns thinks that this solves our banking problems and helps us save and invest more money. There's no hidden fees ever. There's access to more than 55,000 free ATMs. You get paid up to two days earlier when you connect direct deposit to it. You get real-time roundups that invest your spare change after each purchase. Instantly, you get smart deposits to your investing accounts or your emergency fund. And of course, it's FDIC insured for up to a quarter million dollars. It also does all the mobile banking shenanigans you've come to expect, like mobile check deposit, being able to check out on your phone, all that other stuff. Plus, if you shop at certain retailers with it, you get bonus investments. That's a lot of features. Today, we need to solve two problems in regards to this card. Number one, is it worth signing up for Acorns just to get this card? And number two, is it worth existing Acorns users to switch over from whatever other bank they're using and whatever other checking account they're using to now make this their go-to. And I could potentially be in that second camp because I'm already an Acorns user, but so far I've not yet been motivated to make this my primary checking account. Largely it's because there's plenty of those features, but I don't really know what a smart deposit even means or like how much a bonus investment will actually mean to me. Is it worth the work to switch or should I just stay with what I'm doing? Well, the way I see it, the only way we can find out is for us to experiment with it. So let's go do it. First, how nice is this card to use every day? Let's go ask a random stranger and see how impressed they are. Okay, close your eyes and then tell me which of these cards feels like the most premium schnazzy thing. So that's number one. You can just feel it. Feels like, nice. It feels nice. Mm -hmm. Number two. Mm, this is smoother. Let me feel the other one again. Number one. And then here's number yeah. three for oh. one of these hands. Which one feels like the most premium, awesome, good <laughs> card? Both of these feel the nicest. And I would say this one feels the heaviest, and I'm going with heaviest feels nicest. Apple card, schnazzier than either of these. You thought this one felt the worst, which I agree. It's allegedly metal and laser engraved. Apple card It's clearly the fanciest. It doesn't even bend. Okay, so maybe it's not the most impressive card. Now, how easy is it to find a free ATM to withdraw cash from? Let's test this feature out within the app. We'll open this up and we'll see if we can find a free ATM very quickly. Oh, yep, there's one. And let's go see if it's really free or if we have any problems with drawing money out of this thing. Yes. That was good, it worked as expected, but now let's buy some stuff with it and see what those real-time roundups really give us. Twice. Somehow I scanned my same thing twice over there. You don't want to pay double? Not today. Thank you. So as far as I understand it, as soon as I buy something with this card, the leftover change that's on that transaction that rounds up to the next dollar amount goes and is invested for me immediately. Somehow they're really pressing that immediate feature, like it's better if it happens sooner. So am I getting richer instantly? Is that what's happening? Put it in this right here. Okay, now you can take it out. Let's open up the app and see if those things that I just bought have shown up on here and if I can see those roundups in my investing account. Ah, yep, sure enough, there they are. The roundups are there. It's not a lot, it's pennies, but it's something. The way I see it, those roundups are kind of nice. They're like a psychological hack to get us to invest a tiny bit more. I could have just deposited like $3 and it would have done the same thing. But what's the story with these smart deposits? Why are they smart? Is me just depositing money where I want it to go not smart enough? Am I doing dumb deposits? Well, based on the research that I can find on their website, a smart deposit just means that if you set up direct deposit with the card, then you can allocate money from that direct deposit into various accounts within Acorns. It's kind of just an automatic transfer with a better name. I do find this helpful. If you're not doing this yet, you don't have to work with Acorns to do it. If you have kind of a dedicated account that's like your emergency account, I would recommend automatically transferring some money over there just as a good habit, just because it's automatically happening. And you can set up automatic transfers with any bank I've ever used. Maybe not all banks in the world, but any of them I'm currently or have ever used, you can set those kind of recurring transfers up to happen whenever you want. And finally, how about these bonus investments? How much money are we talking here? Am I getting like a 0.5% bonus or like a 5% bonus? The way those work is you have to shop at these particular retailers, use this as your form of payment, and then those retailers will somehow give Acorns like a kickback. Oh, and you know what? It actually tells us in advance how big that bonus investment is. Whenever you're within the Acorns app on the very bottom right-hand corner, 
there's like a little price tag symbol. If we click on that, it will tell us before we have to buy anything, before you even get into this, like a shopping cart, how much that bonus investment will be. So for Sam's Club, it's 0.5%. For Adidas, it's 6%. Not bad. Lululemon's 2.5. HelloFresh is a flat amount, $40 invested. Green Chef is $37.50. Factor is $30. Bucks. These under the most popular category are typically looks like between 0.5% and 3%. It's kind of normal. Well, now that I can see that, I don't feel like I actually have to buy anything because I can just see right off the bat exactly how much I would be getting kicked back to me. So all that means is if I spend the money, then I will get the 5% back or whatever it is transferred as far as a cash balance into my investing account. These kinds of things are funny because it's like this psychological trick to get us to spend more money to end up investing more, like I'm getting something for nothing, but it only really works if you were gonna spend the money anyway. Otherwise, spending 97% of the money to get 3% back is a fool's errand. So overall, is it worth using? Well, if you aren't using Acorns now as an investing service, paying $3 or $5 per month just to get this card, I don't think it's really worthwhile. I would doubt that, unless you really love the features we've talked about so far. It's not a bad card by any means. It just doesn't have any feature that to me jumps out and says, you've got to have it. Now, what about if you already use Acorns to invest, but you've been banking elsewhere? Is it worth making the switch and then being streamlined all with one financial services company? Bank is here, investments are here, everything is simplified. I mean, for me, not really. I think the simplification could be nice. Maybe if you're just getting started, like you're setting up bank accounts and an investment account and stuff for the first time, it makes things really easy for you because it's kind of a one-stop shop as far as how you're maintaining your money. That makes sense to me. I like that. So if that's you, then go for it. So why would an investing company like Acorns make this card? What's what's the deal? Because they are primarily an investing company. Well, I've seen this happen a number of times now. I think Robinhood may also have a debit card. And when finance has a credit card, Yada and Prizepool both have debit cards. I think in this case, an investing company wanted another product offering and they made one. It's entirely unoffensive. It's got decent features, but it's not a world beating card. The checking account isn't offering like amazing interest rates like some others are. So Acorns really needs to improve on that. And if you're not already using Acorns to get this card, you have to pay a monthly fee. So that seems kind of unnecessary to me. If I was Acorns, I would offer a membership level for them that's just the banking side. Like just give us the debit card, a checking account, and and let somebody do that for free, and then maybe if they're there, they'll want to do your investing side. Come on, Acorns. In the end, this thing is cute, but it's not a serious weapon. It's like a Volkswagen Beetle. It looks nice. It's got a nice design. It's cute. It's a decent product overall. It's got a good reputation, but it's just not a sports car. It's not something exciting really worth paying a lot of attention to. I've got some exciting news, actually. I've noticed that when I go online, I see a lot of short form, single topic videos that you can watch for free. And then I see a handful of a la carte paid courses where you can learn a bigger subject, but they're typically only really okay. Like they're not done that well. And I've surveyed a few of them. I've taken a few of them. And it's kind of funny because people will either go way too far in the deep end and they won't explain things well. They'll get into like these crazy concepts about money and they won't explain how they got there. Or the video is just so poorly made and it's so boring that it's not even worth watching. So to solve those problems, I've made my own class. Actually, I'm making my own class right now. I just finished writing it. I need to get into the video production side of it so that it actually happens and you can actually see me and see a video. But the goal is for it to come out in January of 2023. It will be a comprehensive investing masterclass for beginners where I go over everything you need to know about investing defining everything along the way, and then giving you like a customized plan that you're gonna fill out as we take the course. So you can take that with you and then have an action plan ready to actually do something with the information you just learned. I'm really excited to share that with you. And I think it's gonna be super, super valuable. I don't know how long it's gonna be. It might be like two or three hours long, which hopefully that covers everything we need, but isn't too long for you. So keep an eye out for that. Or if you want to, you can sign up for my newsletter where I'm gonna announce as soon as it's ready. You kind of are like in a pre-registered group if you're on that newsletter, because you're gonna know as soon as it's ready that day, I'll email everyone in the newsletter. In the meantime, to know what the best investing app is for beginners, we got to know what the worst investing app is. If you haven't seen this video yet, I think it's really funny. I use various sharp objects to chop up pineapples that represent the bad investing services. So check that out if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Secret comment word for today is beetle.